Hey everyone, welcome to Five Facts with Danny. That's me, I'm Danny. And it is February, it's cold outside, there's snow everywhere, and it's really, really hard to believe that some birds are actually already thinking about spring. The first birds to start thinking about spring are usually the owls, and February is actually the best time to hear owls calling at night. In fact, just the other night, we heard a great horned owl right here in my backyard in the middle of Milwaukee. It was super cool. So, in honor of the great horned owl and all the other owls that are singing right now to get ready for spring, I've got for you five facts about the great horned owl. Let's do it. Fact number one. The great horned owl gets its name because it appears to have horns on the top of its head. But as you've probably guessed, those aren't horns. They do not have horns on top of their heads. So your next guess might be then to say, oh, oh, those must be the owl's ears. They kind of look like ears. And of course, not ears either. Bonus fact for this episode, Owl's ears are actually asymmetrical on their head, so one ear is a little bit higher than the other. The reason for this is that it helps them to more easily pinpoint the exact location that a sound is coming from. Those horns are actually just tufts of feathers, little feathers on the top of the owl's head that stick up, and the reason that they have those tufts of feathers is because it helps them with camouflage. Now, if you think about what a great horned owl looks like, they're pretty mottled, and they kind of look like the bark of a tree. So you stick a great horned owl up in a tree, it can be really hard to see. When it has its feather tufts up, it actually makes it even harder to see because it distorts the shape of the head and helps it to blend in even further with the tree. Now they might also use them if a predator is coming towards them, they'll stick those feather tufts up and that'll make them look bigger and more threatening and possibly scare the predator away. Fact number two, the great horned owl is the most widespread owl species in North America. In fact, it can be found pretty much anywhere in Canada, the United States, and Mexico. And this is because the ideal habitat of the great horned owl is pretty much anywhere. You can find them in prairies, you can find them in forests, you can find them in the desert, you can find them in cities, you can find them in farmland. They have adapted to live in pretty much any habitat. The reason they're able to live in all of these different habitats is because of their diet. Which brings us to fact number three. Gray horned owls are raptors, which means that they eat live prey. And what they eat is pretty much anything they can get their talons on. So most often you'll see them eating small rodents like mice, rats, voles. Um, if they're in habitats that have frogs, small snakes, smaller birds, they'll eat those too. They will sometimes go after larger prey as well. Rabbits are common. Some gray horned owls have been seen eating something as large as a Canada goose or an osprey. And other owls aren't immune to the gray horned owl as a predator either, especially smaller owls like sawwets and screech owls. But gray horned owls have also been known to take on a barred owl, which is almost the same size as them. So that's pretty incredible. Now, one very unique animal that's on the menu for them is skunks. When you think of skunks, the first thing you probably think about is that smell, right? Gray horned owls have a very small olfactory center. They're not affected by the smell. They are also nocturnal, just like our skunks are. And so they're one of the few animals that will actually eat a skunk as a prey item. Fact number four, gray horned owls have incredible eyes. Now this is a necessary adaptation to help them with their nocturnal lifestyle. Because they're hunting at night, they need to be able to see what's going on at night. So they have really, really big eyes. In fact, their eyeballs are much, much larger proportional to their skull than ours are to our skull. If our eyes were as large as owl eyes, they would be about the size of two grapefruits right there in our skull. So they're huge. Now the problem with these large eyes is that it doesn't leave room for much else behind them. You and I have muscles behind our eyeballs. If you hold your chin completely still, and I tell you to look left and look right, look up and down, you can still do that because you have muscles in your eyes that allow you to move your eyeballs around. Owls don't have those muscles, and so in order to look in different directions, they have to physically move their entire head around. That's why they have that other infamous adaptation of the ability to move their necks, swivel their necks. Now they can't swivel their necks all the way around, like some people might have you believe, but they can to move their necks 270 degrees to the left and 270 degrees to the right. So they can move them really, really far around, which helps them when they're looking around and identifying where their prey is. 
Now, you and I have rods and cones in our eyeballs. Rods help us to see movement, and cones help us to see color. Owls have rods and cones as well, but they have a lot more of the rods, which help them to see movement, and a lot less of the cones that help them to see color. It's less important for them to see color because they're out at night, much more important to see that movement. And fact number five. Now, if I were to ask you what sound does an owl make, a lot of people, the first thing they're gonna say is, hoo, hoo, hoo. And in the case of the gray horned owl, you would be correct. So gray horned owls do make that traditional hooting sound. And it sounds like this. Ooh, 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 ooh. Now both males and females will vocalize. The females are larger in size than the males in gray horned owls. However, the males have a larger voice box. So their hoot will sound deeper than the females. So when you hear a pair hooting to each other, you can actually hear the male and the female distinctively. And so there we have it, five facts about the great horned owl. Now, like I said at the top, February is one of the best times of year to hear owls vocalizing. This is the time when they're looking for mates when they're establishing their territory. And so if you were to go on a night hike in pretty much any habitat, there's a chance that you might hear a great horned owl or a pair of great horned owls hooting back and forth to each other. So bundle up, get outside, and happy owling. Bye.